guys, so I'm so excited to shoot this video today. Um, I'm outside the Rolls-Royce Bentley Museum here in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, Central PA. I really feel like uh, this is one of the hidden gems in uh, our area. If you're a car person, you don't have to own a Rolls or a Bentley. You don't have to necessarily love those cars, but I think you can appreciate uh, what uh, this museum has to offer and uh, I can't wait to share that with you I expect that this is probably going to be a multiple video uh, presentation just because of sheer um, amount of information that they uh, and you know everything they have going on um, and I can't wait uh, to see uh, and share this video with you before I do that I need to uh, get the business end of it out of the way uh, welcome to the Driven to Compete channel. My name's Sean. If this is your first time on the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can stay up to date on all my videos while supporting the channel. With that said, um, let's get in the door and uh, I'm excited to start this uh, adventure. I hope that uh, you enjoy the video. <laughs> Okay, so Sean, this is our art gallery, which we debuted about two years ago. Um, we were very fortunate to receive as a donation a number of original paintings. Um, these paintings were originally done for a book called 20 Silver Ghosts that, were, that debuted back in the 70s. The artist is Melbourne Brennell, um, and his, his technique and his skill to capture um, essence and trumple a fool the eye um, as you'll see when we get in here are phenomenal um, this is a, a great acquisition that we had we also have a lot of the artist sketches and notebooks and everything like that so let's go in and i'll show you what we have in here wonderful so these paintings are early pre-World War I ghosts. Um, most of them are very famous silver ghosts. Um, and as you see, as we scroll down here, uh, that, you'll, that you'll see the, the level of detail. Some of these look like photographs that you wouldn't even notice. Um, this is the first silver ghost. Um, it was actually, you know, Rolls-Royce never really called it that. Um, like most British cars of its era, it was basically the 40 slash 50 horsepower. Um, this particular car, which it is known by AX201, which is the British registration plate, is probably the most famous Rolls Royce of them all. And it's certainly probably the most valuable car in the world. Wow. Um, this is the car that set all the records back in the early days and it was done with all of the silver fittings and it was nicknamed the Silver Ghost, which was a name that stuck with it forever. Um, you know, it, it was so, so famous. It was in the ownership of the factory until just recently. It's been purchased by a private individual um, who is a, a great... Uh, collector of Rolls-Royce uh, automobiles, but uh, certainly that is that is the most famous car uh, that Rolls-Royce ever created. And you can see Brindle's level of details yes. here in the black and white photos and even the paper yeah. clips. It's, it's just amazing. It you know, is amazing. His, his ability to capture the essence is, is just amazing. Wow. And this is the book that I'm referring to, The 20 Silver Ghosts. Okay. So the, and, and all of these paintings were done specifically for this book. Well, that's a great story. And again, I mean, look at this photograph, the level of detail in the, in the picture, inside the picture, is just amazing. And this is Queen Mary's silver ghost. Um, a lot of ghosts, I mean, because they were so well built and so well organized, they became, 
you know, very, very reliable. And during the war, many of them were converted to ambulances and tanks, armored cars, basically, for the war. So to find a pre-World War I Silver Ghost that carries its original body that was in the, in the UK at that time is very rare. Most, many of them were rebodied simply because of the fact that they were so reliable they were used during the war. It was Lawrence of Arabia's favorite vehicle and yeah. mode of transportation. You weren't kidding when you talked about the level of detail. It is. the Wow. The patience it must have taken along yeah. with the skill. Yeah. And this was actually the balloon car that Sir Charles Rolls used. That was... Um, so that would be why the balloons in the background yes. as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Charles Rolls actually died at a very young age. He was the first British uh, resident to be killed in an airplane accident. The level of the detail there. Even down to the staining for where like the parts were rubbing against yeah. the I mean just <laughs> yeah if you ever get to the Owl's Head Museum up in Maine they have a Brindle collection as well of some of his other works. Really? The fact that you can sit here and you can read it, it's almost like they, it was, a, you know, uh, glued to the top of the of the photograph. Just incredible detail. <clears throat> it does. It almost looks like it's sitting on top. You know, it's just... I have, a, I have an appreciation for the skill it must have taken to do this. So, and as I mentioned, we also have a lot of the artist original sketches and design proofs before, you know, before the, the book was actually published. Wow, that's, the colors in that are just so vivid. And then on top of some great, obviously, art, I see you have some things that have been donated, some some uh, model cars and such, which I'll shoot here in a moment. Yep, we've got a great scale model collection. So when I, when I said yeah. earlier that a lot of these cars were converted into armored cars and yeah. military vehicles and ambulances, that's a perfect example right there. Of a, of a Lawrence of Arabia <laughs> yeah. style armored vehicle. Some of them had turrets on top, like tanks. Yeah. Uh, they were just That's... so dead reliable. <laughs> wow. Some of these are so good, they almost look like a photograph. And we also have a few paintings that were that were done after the book or weren't included in the book that uh, that we were able to obtain as well through the so donation. Before I show some of the other stuff that's in it, this is a picture of the artist. That's a picture of the artist and the gentleman who donated it. Uh, nice. Pres Presley Blake is actually the founder of Friendly Restaurants. Oh wow! Is and, is uh, he local? Or, I, no, he lives in Florida right he now. He lives in Florida, and he's at the ripe old age of 105. 105. He's 105. Wow! So he's really seen some changes in yep, this country. Absolutely. Wow. But uh, but yeah, he he founded uh, Friendly's r Restaurants and then uh, sold it, bought it back, and sold it again. Wow, 
Yeah, some of the artwork, the time and attention to detail is just amazing. And then we talked about some of the model cars, so we'll start over here because I had shot this, a glimpse of this earlier. This looks like it was donated by uh, somebody. Yep, absolutely. So Mr. Evans gave, gave us this and uh, we were holding on to these until the uh, art gallery was built. So. Uh, so we're, we're thrilled to uh, be able to showcase both of these collections. Yeah, this, uh, you know, I didn't realize how big of a fad this was, but there are people that are just really into the cars, the models. Yep. Of course, they're all different scales. Level different levels of detail, but it's still great to look at. Very nice. So, Sean, this is our parts warehouse, and as I alluded to you a little bit earlier. We've got a huge collection of parts as well to keep our Rolls-Royce and Bentley cars on the road. I and mean, the one thing that the Rolls-Royce Owners Club does and the Rolls-Royce Foundation does, are, you know, our main theme is to keep these cars moving. Our, our cars, for the most part, aren't trailer queens. Our, our members drive these cars. They love those cars. I mean, it would be nothing for them to, for, to drive across country in one of their cars or take a thousand mile trip. Um, you know, once that they are dialed in, they're dead, dead reliable, and, and you know, with with proper maintenance, they run forever. So, you know, as I said our theme is to keep these cars going. So, so these parts, we, some of these parts are for sale. Yep. So we have a number of parts for sale. We have some that are already sold you know, that are crated up, ready to go overseas. Yeah, and and I think that's interesting because if if you're if you're not uh, local to central Pennsylvania and you're watching this video and uh, say you're in Europe and you're having trouble finding a part, there's a very good likelihood these, these folks here might actually have something to help you with your car. Yeah, so we have everything from engines to suspension parts to new old stock sheet metal. I mean, there's we've got three fenders for a... A, a silver cloud three up there we've got quarter panels we've got rocker panels we've got door panels we've got early pre-war front axles and brake drums and engines and transmissions wow um, yeah i'm just uh <laughs> alternator or generators and starters and water pumps that's a great i love that too by the way he just got a text message or something and that beep beep that was I mean you do you really do have quite a bit of of stuff for the person that's looking to possibly yeah I mean it's a, it's a little tight right here we've gotten some other donations and we're just uh, looking for some space but you know, but wire, still, yeah. wire wheels and steering columns and radiators. I see engine parts, uh, engines. I see all kinds of stuff. Systems, oh, interior wow. parts. Yeah, we've got. Me, we've got. Let me a zoom lot in. Of bits. Show folks. Yeah, I mean, there's a very good likelihood somebody's watching this video in the near future and might see something on, on a shelf and be like, "Hey, I've been looking for that." And uh, so I will definitely will, will provide contact information, not only in the description of the video, but while I'm shooting the video, there'll be the links that pop up for folks as they're, they're walk, uh, watching to be able to have that information yeah. provided. Now, the, 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 the project car you see hidden in here is a, a Phantom 3 which was Rolls-Royce's first V12 car. Oh, really? Um, so, the, yeah, these were made in the in the mid to late 30s. They only made a little over 700 Phantom 3s. This was donated to us. Uh, uh, the project stalled. Unfortunately, the, uh, the gentleman who was having this re restored passed away, so he's donated to us. Um, eventually, we're going to be selling this, so if somebody's looking for the next Pebble Beach project... Um, okay. Okay. 
you know, it's, it's a Gurney Nutting, Sedanka DeVille, so it's a very high-end coach builder that will be a stunning car when it's put back together again. And like I said, someday you'll see it rolling out on the lawn at Pebble Beach and other Concours. Okay. This is one of our newest donations. This is a, uh, a, a small horsepower, if you say, Rolls-Royce. So, um, you know, when I said the Phantoms were the top of the line, the entry levels were the small horsepower. So it was a, a 20 horsepower or a 20, 25, okay. or 25, 30. And when I talked earlier about the Darby Bentleys. Yes. These were basically the same chassis configuration. Okay. These were built at the Darby plant alongside the Darby Bentleys. So they're, you know, they, they, even though they look completely different, they had a lot of the same engineering and, and, and you know, in them and shared, shared some of the components. Okay. Basket on the back's a nice detail. Yeah. And then what is this? Okay, so <laughs> you remember when I showed you the Phantom 2 chassis? Yeah. Showed you what what yes. you got. So this is when you buy a brand new Rolls Royce Phantom. This is what's underneath the skin. So this is a Phantom 7. Uh, undercare. This is the space frame from this Phantom Seven. It's all aluminum. aluminum. It's all extruded. You can Isn't see. that amazing? Huh. That's really. I'm kind of happy that we walked back here just to be able to show folks yeah. this. So you know, like this is a good example. This rocker panel structure here is not just a hollow piece it's an extruded piece here so you can see the strength of that, that the strength oh absolutely it. absolutely but, uh, yeah so the the phantoms even today are still the 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 top of the line rolls royce and this is this is what you don't see underneath that car hmm There's a lot going on, and that's a, an 04 chassis. So, I mean, 2004 pre production Phantom. Yep. I mean, that just goes to show how far they were, you know. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's almost 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> another li people, a, a little fact that people don't realize is that, you know, Rolls, as I said earlier, Rolls Royce owned Bentley, and they were the same company basically for seventy years. That's no longer true. Today, Volkswagen of Volkswagen Group owns Bentley, yeah. and BMW owns Rolls Royce. Really? So they are two distinct companies. Um, Volkswagen has taken Bentley back to its racing roots of the twenties. I mean, Bentley. They built basically racing cars. They won Le Mans six times. Wow, I didn't that, know that. Yeah, in the 20s and 30s. So That's when the Continental story. GT came out in 2004, and you know the, the, the twin turbocharged uh, W12 engines, you know they're going back to those sports car roots. Whereas you know BMW has taken the Phantom and the the Wraith and the Dawn and the Ghost and brought it up to you know its traditional roots as well. Um, the one of the key words Rolls Royce likes to use for their cars is bespoke. Every as opposed yeah. to just custom ordered, everything is bespoke. So you know, once again, no two are alike. Everything is done handmade. If you ever get a chance to see any of the videos of the factory, you'll hear that pretty much the loudest noise in the factory is the sewing machines. Huh. What? That's a great story, and, uh, you know, I think it's great that you have this out here that, you know, as a, you know, I realize you're limited on space in the showroom, but uh, I really think that this is just as interesting as the earlier version sitting on display. Yeah, last year at the <clears throat> uh, Pennsylvania Auto Show in, in Harrisburg, we had this on display alongside of the Phantom 2 
chassis just so people can see the difference. difference. And people were thrilled to be able to see both yeah, of them. Yeah, I am, I am as well, and I can't say thank you enough for sharing. So what's next on the uh, so we'll tour? Take, we'll take you into the workshop. Great. I get to check, check out the workshop as well. So you have parts and uh, you do some restoration work? We do we do maintenance work. Maintenance. We, we, okay. don't, we, uh, we don't have the facilities to do full-on restoration. So most of it is just light maintenance, detailing, upkeep, and things like that. So in this area are a number of cars that we just simply don't have room for um, within, within the, the main facility. So... We've got uh, a number of silver clouds here. We've got some other Bentley models and, and some other cars that we're working on. This is this is kind of touching base on what you were just explaining on their, their Bentley and their... Yeah, so this is a Bentley, what's what's known in the in the in the Bentley circles as a as a Bentley special. So this actually started life as an R-type sedan, which is very similar to the <laughs> Silver Dawn we saw in the show. Yeah. Because those cars are so expensive to restore, and quite frankly, they're not worth huge amounts of money. Many people, especially in the UK, take those bodies off, put a lightweight body on, shorten the wheelbase, beef up the engines, and you know, go vintage racing with them. So this is an example of a Bentley Special. I like it. Yeah, they're, it's, it's a, they're a lot of fun to drive. They're it, not. They are not a traditional Bentley by any means. No, it it's, it looks like it would be a blast. But it is. It is definitely a hot Let me, rod. Yeah, I'm really even the steering wheel. I'm really digging how they. And so, and these these designs harken back to the vintage Bentleys before <laughs> Rolls Royce bought them when they were competitive sports cars and they were out winning Le Mans and and other competitions. And that that tail is just yeah. And they really have not changed that that uh, logo. All the, I mean, it's still very much. You know, yeah, it's, recognizable it's, it's today. It's very much the recognizable traditional Bentley. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. That's. You've got. Uh, and then all I see here, you have some engines. We have some some engines on display, and uh, some that we're either working on or for. Um, we we hold technical seminars here, and uh, discuss the various aspects of Rolls Royce and Bentley ownerships for our members. That's great. That's <laughs> just... Yeah. And in here, this, this is set up like uh, if you were... Yeah, so this is... Uh, uh, you know, we, we saw the other Silver Cloud back in the showroom. And there was a firm by the name of Radford, which used to build custom-bodied cars, and then later they became very well with shooting brakes or station wagons. So they would convert your Rolls Royce into a into a hunting wagon or a shooting really? wagon like that. But they later in life, they got into creating special accessories or upgrades for your Rolls Royce or Bentley. So this, the fold-out picnic table was a great example of a lot of, you know, interior modifications, upgrades. Okay. Uh, so this is, this is a Radford Countryman. Um, silver cloud so it's been upgraded by Radford so you can see it's got the division window in there yeah. it's got a lot more bar accessories in there um, yeah. it's, it's very interesting and I noticed depending upon like you pointed out depending upon who who was the, the coach builder were the 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 size and the placement of like just your mirrors and things to that nature yep and uh, yeah, it, it was all uh, unless it was a mandate by the government of where you were importing that car or driving it. Pretty much anything was up to you back then. You well, know? it's uh, now, nowadays, of course, you have much more stringent examples and and uh, rules that need to be followed. Well, I, I, I got to stop for a second. That's a color I have never seen before oh, okay. on one of these. Yeah. 
it's sort of a, a butterscotchy. I forget what exactly the, the factory color is. That's a 77. Yep. So this is, it's a Silver Wraith 2, which is still a basic silver shadow that came out in, the, in late 1965. Uh, the Silver Wraith 2 is a, is a long wheelbase silver shadow. They renamed it uh, in, in the late 70s when they made a number of uh, substantial upgrades. As I said, you know, rack and pinion yeah. steering and some other things. So the Silver Wraith 2... Um, they still use the same name of the Silver Wraith, which we saw in the main showroom, but just, you know, change that. So, um, yeah, they, they Rolls-Royce and Bentley seem to stick with more traditional names. Uh, okay. Be, and, of course, everything is, you know, Wraith or Ghost or Phantom. So it's, you know, you get that essence that the car is whispering as you're driving it. You know, one of the, f one of the most famous ads... Uh, that Rolls Royce used um, back in the day was at 60 miles an hour. The loudest thing you can hear is the clock ticking. <laughs> okay. So, uh, this is a, a project car that we're working on. This is another small horsepower Darby factory built. This is a Rolls Royce 2530 with a uh, a woolly coach built body on there. Um, we're very fortunate to have this. There's only, I mean, some of these coach builders were very well known. Some were not. Um, there's only two two woolly bodied examples left out there. Really? And this is one of them. So, but uh, we, uh, so the engine's been rebuilt on this. We fired it up. We just need to go through tuning. Um, once again, we hold technical seminars here. So, other members who have a similar car who want to come learn about their car and how to tear the engine down, how to assemble it, how to tune it. We use these as, as those uh, opportunities to, to assist our members. Well, it's, uh, I, I'm sure this is going to look great when it's finished. Yeah, absolutely. So. You can get a, just a few more back here, but... Uh... I gotta tell you, that's an unusual color scheme. Okay, so you, <laughs> you some some of your 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 viewers may remember that back in the in the in the eighties, there was a religious cult figure in Oregon, um, the Bhagwan, who had close to, if not over, ninety Rolls Royces um, when he fled the country. Those cars were confiscated and they were all sold. Um, so he was a very controversial figure. Um, certainly, you know, if you, if any, if you or, your, or your viewers read up on him, there's a lot of interesting stories about this figurehead. But he was his disciples and followers just went out and bought him Rolls Royces. Really? I mean, they just, I mean, who needs 90 rolls? We braces? need a couple followers of our own yes, about it. <laughs> and they had a, a Southern California custom painter on site on their compound in Oregon that were customizing these cars. So that's why you see these wild metal flakes and metallics. I mean, some of them were, were painted with murals with peacocks on them and rainbows. I could only imagine and, what the painter at the factory would think about something oh, like uh, this. I'm sure they were not happy about it, but, you know. So you happened to, to get your hands on one of those yep. cars. So we, we, got, we got one of the Bogwan cars donated to that's, us last that's, year. That's, I mean, other than the, I mean, it looks pretty stock inside. It just looks like he just decided he was going to make it unique. Yep, absolutely. As I said, they had one of their disciples was a custom painter out of Southern California, and they had their own on-site body shop, and they were just spraying. <laughs> I mean, they bought so many Rolls Royces, they literally couldn't find any new ones anymore, so they started buying <laughs> used ones. So, <laughs> Well, I appreciate you showing us, you know, the warehouse, the sh maintenance, you know, shop, yep. restoration shop. I mean, I think that there's, um, I didn't expect to see some of these cars in the, you know, they look like they could be put in the, into the showroom collection and some of the cars could be switched back and forth. They're in that nice of shape. 
yeah, it's very nice. And, I, and I'll shoot real quick for viewers just some of the different colors, you know, that you see here. Yeah, that's very, uh, that's very nice too. With the huh. very plush. Yeah, this uh, this regal red silver shadow was actually painted by the students at Pennsylvania College of Technology in Williamsport. Really? So, th yep. Uh, not too many people know, but PCT up in Williamsport has a restoration program um, where the students work on vintage cars and and restore them well, that's a great story everything from mustangs to rolls royces and, and in between they actually they have another one of our cars up there that they're doing as well so the students painted this car well this car looks great and i like yeah. the color very much like the color and uh i mean i really i really think that's a great story that you know it's, it was used for educational purposes just as much. Yep, and we're we're currently going through the brake hydraulic systems on it now and getting it functional. And I have watched, okay, so I have watched some of the other shows on, and they've talked about the suspension and the brakes on these cars being fairly complicated yeah. for what they are. So they're I can imagine yeah, they're extremely complicated. And, you know, it, these cars need to be driven. The longer they sit, the worse they get because all of those hydraulic valves need to be exercised. You know, you can't have sludge building up on there. Um, and they're, they're very expensive. You know, it's, it's one of those deals, where, you know, you either pay me now or pay, pay me later, later type of thing. And I always yeah. tell people, you know, the cheapest Rolls Royce you buy may be the most expensive yeah. one you end up paying. Because, I mean, you could buy... A basically running silver shadow for five thousand dollars but the first time you get a ten thousand bill on brakes and suspensions on it you might as well just buy the best you can afford yeah no i i, I can uh, yeah uh, there's been shows done i think gas monkey had one where they ended up trying to like they wanted to do something to the suspension, put it on air ride, and they realized the brakes were all tied together with the suspension, yep. and they had a heck of a time on that project to get it to where they could do it. They figured, you know, they ended up changing everything. Yeah, it's 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 an integral system, and it's really, yeah. you know, it's not up for modifications. Um, it's actually, you know, a system that Citron uh, used on their cars, and, and then Rolls-Royce adapted it to... To their systems um, but once again they, they were constantly upgrading those and, and making improvement throughout the year so 